Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to talk about something that's kind of a curiosity of mine. I can't wait to see what Jeep ends up doing with this. So let's rewind a little bit. The Jeep Gladiator was sort of the vehicle that blew this channel up. I mean, I had some things going before that and then you had the Wrangler JL launch back in 20, late 2017. Uh, I was kind of early getting one of those. We did some cool videos with it and so uh, the Wrangler JL kind of started the growth of the channel and then of course when the Jeep Gladiator came out that was just awesome and uh, since then you know a lot of you have said that you missed the Gladiator on the channel and to be completely honest with you I kind of missed the Gladiator also and uh, it just so happens that the Gladiator that I built uh, is still here in my hometown and I know who ended up buying it and I see it all the time and that's like the worst thing in the world you guys know if you have a vehicle that you really love and then you end up trading it in and then somebody you know gets it and you have to see it all the time it just <laughs> it's just really painful so long story short there's a possibility I'm not committed yet but there's a possibility that I may order another gladiator and I'm kind of going through the models and looking at which one I would like to build if I do. I'm really anxious to see the 2022 order guide. You know it's getting ready to be May. You know this coming weekend is the beginning of May. Usually sometime in May or June we see the new order guide for the upcoming model year. So it should be right around the corner and I'm really curious to see if they do the 4 by e version uh, for the Gladiator. Now I've heard that it might be the 2023 model year before we see a Gladiator 4xe. Um, but we're gonna look at the order guide here pretty soon and, and see for sure. Now the curiosity that I have is this. The Jeep Wrangler has a pathetically low gross vehicle weight rating and so the 4xe hardware of course that adds significant weight you've got the battery pack and all the you know electric motors and associated wiring and additional skid shields and all the stuff that goes with building a hybrid jeep it adds a lot of weight but since that vehicle had such a pathetically low gvwr to begin with they were able to pretty easily bump up that gvwr number and that helps them to maintain the same level of payload and towing. You know, the Wrangler can only tow 3,500 pounds anyway, uh, but they were able to maintain that level of payload and towing even with the hybrid version. But <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. If you look at the Gladiator, that truck starts off with a really high GVWR to begin with. It's a heavy truck. It's got anywhere from 5,800 to 6,250. GVWR to begin with and then when the eco diesel option came on the scene they had to bump it up a little bit more because the eco diesel is heavy and it has a def fluid tank and emissions equipment and additional skid plating and stuff on it uh, that added weight so they bumped up the GVWR again now it's like 6350 maybe 6450 I'll have to double check my numbers but the point is the Jeep Gladiator already has a really high GVWR for a mid-size truck as it is. In fact, it's the highest gross vehicle weight rating of any mid-size truck on the segment. So they don't have a lot of wiggle room. You know what I'm saying? If they, if they tack on 800 pounds more GVWR to the Gladiator, now they're right there where a full-size truck is. You know, the Ram 1500's got like 7,000, 7,200 pounds GVWR. So I don't see them doing that. I mean, that would be kind of wild to have your mid-size truck and your full-size truck at the same rating. You know, it, I just can't see them doing that. But if they don't do that, then the 4 by e is going to have a pathetic payload number which means it's going to also have a pathetic towing number. I mean, if they don't do something with the GVWR, the weight of that truck is going to make it useless as a truck. You won't be able to haul or tow anything with it. Um, so it's kind of a conundrum, and I don't really know how they're gonna handle that. I mean, they're gonna have to jack the GVWR up a little bit more. Just how much more they go is gonna be the interesting thing. How much payload and towing capacity can the Gladiator have 
or any mid-size truck for that matter in a hybrid form? That's the million dollar question. It's going to be interesting to see how Jeep handles that. Um, hopefully we'll find out later this summer, but time will tell on that. Obviously the Eco Diesel is now an option and that's the way I'm leaning if I order one because I already have the Gen 3 Eco Diesel and that sweet 8 HP 75 transmission. I know for a fact it's got plenty of power to tow my enclosed trailer with these toys inside. I've already done it a few times. Tons of power there. Braking is no problem. Of course the trailer has brakes on it. You know the only issue that I've run into with a half ton truck is that the light weight of it can get a little bit squirrely on windy days but the funny thing about it is if you look at the gladiator especially the diesel version of the gladiator it's within a couple hundred pounds of curb weight of this ram that i have now so the weight of the vehicle is pretty similar the wheelbase is more similar than you would imagine so the size of a gladiator is pretty similar to the size of this ram that i've got so with the same powertrain in it you know, for all intents and purposes, it should tow the same way that this truck tows. You know, there shouldn't be any difference in the way it tows. And there are some things about the Gladiator Eco Diesel that I like better. I like how you can manually shift it, whereas on the Ram, you can only, you know, lock out gears from the top down. On the Jeep, you can literally manually shift it. Um, you also have the electronic start stop, which if you're running around town a lot, can save you some more fuel. So there's some cool things about it as well. Uh, 373 axle gears, which you cannot get in the Ram. I think the 373s are a sweet spot. The 392s and 410s are starting to get a little bit too deep. The 321s are a little too tall. So the 373s right there in the sweet spot. The Jeep has that. So there's some things going for it. Uh, that's the way I'm kind of leaning. But I would really love to see what they do with that 4xe you know if they were to make a 4xe gladiator and let's say they give it 6,000 or 6,500 pounds of towing capacity hmm that might be interesting we'll see so anyway uh, that's just something that i was thinking of you know how are they going to handle that how is the 4xe going to stack up to the eco diesel when it comes to building a compact or a mid-size truck with a hybrid powertrain time will tell but Leave some comments below. What do you guys think they're gonna do? How is Jeep gonna handle this conundrum? And going forward in time, you know that all the other competitors are gonna do the same thing. People keep saying that hybrid power and electric power is the future, which maybe it is. I think it's gonna be a long time before we get there, at least in a mainstream you know, level. Uh, but the fact is things are trending that direction. All of the automakers are gonna be doing this for their mid-sized trucks before long. How are they going to handle it? How are they going to build a hybrid truck in that size range with that low of a GVWR that can still haul and still tow? We'll see. What do you guys think? So with that being said, I've got these new tires sitting here that I'm about to begin doing a long-term review on. And I'm wondering, maybe I should see what happens with this jeep gladiator i'm still thinking about maybe ordering another one i need to figure that out and see how that's going to shake out because there's no sense in mounting these up yet if i'm going to end up using them on a different truck you know if i get the gladiator we can throw them on there and do the long-term review so it might be a few more weeks before we put these on the road but the long-term review is going to begin really soon one way or the other and of course a lot of you joined the channel and subscribed because you like to see tractor stuff and we haven't uh, put the tractor away permanently we're still using it on a regular basis got some more videos coming with the new holland workmaster 40 so don't leave stick around we're going to do some cool stuff here i've got an idea for this gravel driveway that i'm going to be talking about pretty soon the uh, land plane that i bought it works really awesome out there on the compacted portion of the road where it's, you know, it gets a lot of traffic and the gravel is just ground down into the soil and it's really hard and compacted. That land plane works great for scratching that up and leveling it back out. But what I've noticed is on my driveway where it's new and it's still got thick uh, layers of gravel that are not getting heavily traveled as much, the land plane doesn't work as well. 
even the land plane tends to dig down and start scraping down toward the base material, which is not what I want to do. I just want to level the top off. I don't want to dig down. Um, and no matter how I finesse the three-point hitch, it seems like that land plane just wants to dig in. Um, so even the land plane's not working out too good for me on this. Um, so I have another idea, something I'm going to try, and uh, I'll be showing you, you know, that here uh, probably the next day or two. We've got some thunderstorms coming right now, but as soon as these storms are out of here, I'll show you what I'm thinking about. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you later.